Meantime, we got a guest. Here we go. Woo-hoo. USC legend, Grey Cup champion, NFL quarterback, and uh, BattleBots host. Yeah, Sean Salisbury. Hey, listen, each and every week I say, uh, yes, come on. It's our guy, the one the guy. Been through <laughs> the ups, been through the downs, and uh, I'm so glad to see this guy on just a perpetual up as I knock on wood because I'm superstitious, but I'll bet you Sean would say, hey, buddy, don't worry about the superstition. It ain't luck. The more you practice, the luckier you get, and Sean deserves everything he's got and more. How are you doing, pal? Uh, I'm doing great, thank you. Well, yeah, everybody's a little luck. You don't, you know, you know, step off a curb and twist your ankle, but uh, uh, good people around you and great teammates always help, too. So thank you, brother, and I like the grind. Well, you mentioned, let's see, there's a lot of great segues in here because you mentioned ankle, you mentioned teammates. Mm. So that brings me to Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo and that whole situation. Obviously, Trey out with his injury, one of his teammates, Jimmy, taking over. And, Sean, I, I'm going to do a long uh, a, a lead in here because you know what you're talking about so well. I, I tried to look at it from both sides, including – uh, the guy didn't have a training camp, didn't have the playbook, this, that, whatever. Do you buy any of that? Is there a defense of Jimmy Garoppolo in your opinion? Oh, well, the the one thing is he didn't play well, and I understand the slight rust of not getting a lot of reps, guys, you know, because of the injury, but also they had to get Trey a lot of work in training camp. I, I get all that. And not playing him, wondering if he was going to get traded or not. I get all that. But the playbook thing has me a little baffled. It does. It, now, if you told me that this was his first year in the system, sure. that a playbook that he hadn't played with this team and that he was still learning it, didn't have it, then I'd be concerned. But I, I'm a little – that that part confused me. Poor performance. Listen, you can't throw the ball to the wrong guy. you got to be accurate. You can't miss Debo Samuel when he's wide open, which at times in Jimmy's career, and he's a really good player, at times in Jimmy's career has happened in big games. Those are the simple things I've talked about on here – He's got to make. so. But when it comes to the mental side, uh, I would imagine I, I'm just thinking about my career, and I'm not Jimmy Garoppolo, and he's a better player, but in the five or six years or so I was in Minnesota, uh, when you got the – it wasn't unless they put some new formation in. The verbiage never changed when it was the, the coach, and you just stuck with it. And, I, and Kyle hasn't left. His verbiage hasn't changed. So that part baffles me. And I, I think that's a little bit of a poor excuse for a veteran who's better than that. But he's got to be better performance-wise. But, guys, think about this. And you know I like Jimmy. I think he's a good player. But he's got to play better and great. That's why they drafted Trey Lance. They need him to have a, a little more out-of-body experience. But it was like 19-4, and 19-5 and five, his first 24 games or so. His last 22 games, he is 12-10. and 10. He's thrown 18 interceptions. He's fumbled four times. And they're, tw- and they're 12 and 10. So he's averaging a turnover a game for the last 22 games. It should be going the other way. It should be going the other way. I don't like those returns. Jimmy's got to get better. Hmm. Sean, I, I'm thinking to your days as a QB, if you, you want all your pieces available, but if I told you you're starting this Sunday and your best offensive lineman is out, and that's Trent Williams, or your top skill or top two skill players are out, which avenue would you choose? Uh, you know, Which one would you want in place more often? I think for me, one is I would first off think, okay, because you can't play the position sitting on your booty, man. You just can't. And and it's dominant in the run game. If you told me normally, I can, if, if I have four good ones and they got to get better up front and my star goes out, but I feel comfortable with a backup, I can, I can adjust my protections to help him. And losing Trent Williams is a monster gig, trust me. But if you told me, well, you got four other ones that are doing a really good job and it can handle the run. Game. We got a fill in coming in or take that away. And we got those five guys. We got a backup running back because our starters hurt. And we've got Debo and George Kittle out. Ooh, that changes game plan. And they, they're not dominating the line of scrimmage. I'd probably, because if it was just one guy that made the difference, it'd be the whole story. But when there's five offensive linemen, I can get a little bit better. I would probably say, in one, if it's a short term, I would say, give me the two weapons because we're not scoring many points, and let's manipulate the protections and without our tackle in Trent Williams' case. But over the course of a long season, I need those five guys up front. Hard to play the position from a uh, sitting-on-your-ass posi- uh, <laughs> standpoint, but 
I, I know that they've got to get, they've got to be more innovative, and they're going to have Kyle's going to have to think outside the box a little bit more to create better running lanes to protect the quarterback, but also to get guys in space. So Jimmy Garoppolo has a free reign of it. Ain't going to be any easier. What do they got the Rams this week? Mm-hmm. It doesn't get any easier with Aaron Donald on the uh, and that pass rush and the Rams trying to get back to their normal game. Sean Salisbury with us. Sean, this is more of a broad question, but we were having this philosophical conversation yesterday with with the way the defense is and and so many of those skill positions, uh, Kyle Shanahan's play calling, et cetera. Th- this team is built to win a Super Bowl. It's the quarterback that has been their Achilles heel. Uh, you you hear the rumors that they had uh, they they had a shot at getting Aaron Rodgers uh, over the last couple of years. They definitely had a shot at getting Tom Brady. If you're the one that's wearing the suit like John Lynch, do you think this team was smarter trying to go after an existing star quarterback rather than trying to draft the replacement for Jimmy's limitations? And uh, with the window that is created in the NFL Mm -hmm. and the way that the last team, look at Jacksonville, that can possibly finish, win the division with the way they're playing. Oh, I would always, and listen, and both those guys, we're, we're talking like generational type Mount Rushmore top 10 of all time. One of them's the goat and you could put the other one. You ain't leaving him out of your top seven or eight when it just comes to pure players. And as far as pure throwers go, he's up there with Marino's the best of all time. So, Oh, I would, with that roster as well, think about it, guys. They have stars at five or six positions where that guy is as good as anybody in the league. Fred Warner, George Kittle, you know, Trent Williams, Debo Samuel. I mean, they got those guys. Oh, this team's been set up for that five-year roster window to have the one thing they're missing, a guy who can make throws and carry a team when other guys are hurt. If you got Aaron Rodgers and Trent Williams is out, he's going 30 or 38. That's who he is. If you got Brady and three of your receivers out, you'll be in position to win and still finding ways to get it done and going for a two-point conversion and have 55 come from behind victories in your life. So, yes, looking back, and we always have hindsight, there is no question. Jimmy's never going to be either one of them. Trey Lance is never going to be either one of them. And if you could have got them reasonable and kept your roster pretty much intact, you don't ever pass up on Brady or Rodgers if it's possible because I'd take one Super Bowl now to have to rebuild in three years, then hope to get a Super Bowl and – and know that in five years you may have to rebuild anyway because people get free agents and salary cap leave. Always get the quarterback first. And they had two chances at those guys and didn't and, and couldn't pull it off. Sean Salisbury with us. Sean, uh, the position, there's got to be some feel to it. Will all his fans watch go, ah, how did the quarterback throw that one? Did he not see the safety? Did he not see the linebacker? But I don't understand the lack of feel for Jimmy at that end zone going out of the back of the end zone. I know it's happened before, but can you even explain how that situation, there was a deeper drop than needed to not have the sense of where he was? How does that a play like that even happen? Yeah, well, it's, it's simple mental lapse. It is. Now, I do when people are saying when all this, you know, it's much easier, as you had mentioned, for all of us to sit at home during uh, on highlights or sit at home watching on TV say, dude, there's the end zone, as opposed to the guy that you're backed up, you got to drop back it out of your end zone, make a play, which fortunately for him, they did step out of the end zone or it, it right. ends up six more points so um yeah it's it doesn't happen much we see putters do it and our, our guy dan orlovsky but other than that it doesn't happen much it's just a sense of awareness and it goes with what jimmy said about getting a feel for the playbook again and my arms you know all those things but you just can't happen because imagine guys and it was a close game imagine if the score's tied and now you give up two and you got to go he's just got to be more aware easier for us to see but part of playing that position is mental, physical, all the emotional awareness. And Jimmy's got to get back into that because this team, unfortunately, doesn't have time to be in a chase mode all season long. That is Sean Salisbury on air four hours in Houston each and every morning, Monday through Friday. Comes right on with us and, uh, oh, so much more. Sean, we always appreciate your insight. Insight we can't get anywhere else. Have a good week, my brother. You too, fellas. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Take care. That's uh, Sean Salisbury. Probably is probably going on some New York radio station. <laughs> yeah, right now. I feel like he just sits there with a headset all day. He should. He hey, just finished the show. Just click, click, yeah. click, click on and, and on. I mean, he truly loves it. You got to respect that. We'll take a break. When we 